and callings are without repentance. That's what the Bible said. That's found in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter and the 29th verse. It said, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance, meaning that they are irrevocable. What it simply means is that your gift that God gave you, he will never take it from you. Amen. Never take it from you. Whether you lead God or not. See, that's why when you understand how God uses us, it, God doesn't necessarily use us because we are saved, but because we are saved, he's given us gifts and he uses us. But if you were to backslide and God had given you a gift, your gift would yet be active even though you are not saved. Somebody said, how does that work? Here it is right here. Gifts and callings are without repentance. God only vote your gift. But watch this. God can yet use your gift to bless someone else. Well, they'll even go to heaven and you'll end up going to hell if you don't get back saved again. So, so I don't want no gift from God that's going to bless somebody else and don't bless me. But it's the same token. God will use the gift that he's placed on the inside of you to be a blessing to somebody else whether you're saved or not. That's why you see some people that are not saved, don't go to church. They have particular gifts and God uses them to bless other people. But if they don't turn their lives over to God, and they'll lift up their eyes. They'll lift up their eyes. That's how big it is. When we think about it tonight, what God has promised, he will do. Now, this guilt, this, this Romans 11, 29 is kind of related to uh, the promise that God made Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make a mighty nation that yet holds true. The promises that God makes are unconditional, even though there are some things that we sometimes have to do. But when God said, I'm going to do something, and he doesn't say you have to do something else, then the promise that God has given you is going to hold true. So there are some times, that's why we are blessed beyond measure outside of what we do, because God has made a promise. If he said, I'm going to do something for you, and he didn't give you a condition, Guess what? Regardless of what you do, whether you believe or not, God's going to do what he promised. And that's what makes him such an awesome God, is that whatever he promised, he's going to do. I love the kind of God like that. Now, if we know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of them, at some degree in their life, they disobeyed God, didn't they? Abraham went on to have a baby without using Sarah. He went on one before God. And, 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 and Isaac, he, he did some things right. And, and then Jacob, he did some stuff. So when you look at the patriarchs from the beginning of the Bible to now, they were not perfect people, but then they were people that faithfully served God. Now, when we look at that, you say, well, how, if they weren't perfect, how did they faithfully serve God? Listen, I, as long as we are on this earth and living in this flesh, we're going to have some errors. And God knows that. That, that. That's why he said, listen, he has forgiven us for yesterday, for today, and tomorrow. So, but guess what? Repentance is what changes that with God. Now watch this. Unrepentant sin will send you to hell. Unrepentant sin will send you to the lake of fire. So even though we are believers and when we error before God, we have to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness is not automatically given to you because you say you're a Christian. It's not automatically given to you because you say, say you love God. And, and, and don't let anybody fool you that because they are Christian to say that they never ever and they never sinned after they got saved, after they got filled with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God, that they never, that's a lie. Hello, open the house. The only somebody that was born on this earth and from the time they were born till they died that never sinned was Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, this is not an excuse for you to go out and willfully sin because the Bible said of things in Hebrews is that if you willfully sin, there is no forgiveness for you. 
Genesis, the fourth chapter. There is no forgiveness for you if you willfully sin. That's why when people come to the altar and they ask for forgiveness, knowing that they're going to go back and commit the same sin, repentance means to turn from your sin. So in essence, you should never ask God to forgive you for a sin that you intend to do again. <laughs> Somebody said, well, no, I don't want to die in my sins. You, you're going to die in your sins. If your intent when you ask God for forgiveness is knowing that you're going to do it again, you have not repented. Now, they lie to people. I know, I know y'all probably heard it, but they lie to people in church all their lives and will just repent and God will forgive you. Yes, repent and God will forgive you. They didn't lie about repent. But now, when you say it and your motive is not to, not to stop and to do it again, that's not repentance. So think about it. Most people have not truly repented. If you committed the same sin, oh no, somebody said, well, the Lord got to help me. No. What you have to do is tell the Lord, Lord, I'm ready to stop doing what I'm doing. And when, watch this. When you say no, then God will back you. See, y'all want God to say no, regardless of how you feel. God will not take, he will not take over you like that. God, you are a free moral agent. You can do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. So somebody said, well, well, how do I stop? How do you stop? You got to stop lacking the sin the wrong, the error that you're doing in order to be able to quit. So God is not going to ever take something from you what you love. We try to make God take what we love and then blame God. Well, I'm going to stop sinning like that when the Lord take it from me. No, you're going to stop sinning like that when you stop and then the Lord will help you quit. Watch it. When you stop, then the Lord will help you quit. But if you don't ever stop, he can't ever help you quit. So I said, well, why do I need the Lord? The Lord is your empowerment not to go back to where you came from. He's your empowerment that you don't have to repeat it again. You can stop. Now, let's start with this. The conditions of our natural life does not alter the gift that God has placed in you. I said it again. The conditions of your natural life does not alter the gift that God has placed in you. Many times, we allow our circumstances in life to change how we serve God and say, well, I can't do that or I'm not going to do that because I'm in a bad place. If the Lord really loved me and cared about me, I would be where I am. Do y'all not know that Jesus came here and left everything he had? He didn't have nothing on earth. As a matter of fact, whether y'all really want to believe it or not, Jesus lived worse than you are living right now. When he left the home of Mary and Joseph, Jesus lived from place to place in the desert, wherever he could find a spot. That's why the scripture said, the birds of air have nests. But the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. Those 33 years he lived on earth, he had nothing to call his own. And we have the nerve to complain, come and go, I got, a, I got an apartment, I don't like where I am. Well, at least you got somewhere to lay it down. You got somewhere to cook it, you got somewhere to wash it, you got somewhere to clean it. He had none of that. So y'all said, well, what, what, what does this have to do with Joseph on the night? It has a lot to do with Joseph on the night. I'm trying to show you that in the fact that God had placed a gift inside of Joseph, his being in prison did not stop his gift from working. Many times what we'll do is because we don't lack the conditions of what we are of the place in life or a state in life where we are. Well, Lord, if, if, I, if I can't be blessed where I am, I'm going to stop serving you. whole lot of people, Deacon Henry, have said, well, 
I'm in a bad place right now. Everything I got to work. My life is tore. How can God love me if my life is where it is? So I'm not going to serve God. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not listening. I ain't going. I'm, I'm not listening no more. I quit. Okay. That's your fault. Huh? Well, well, well you a preacher. And because you, 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 you done got divorced and your children are left and, 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 and the wife took everything you had or whatever. And you, you left down to nothing. I ain't going to preach no more. The, the Lord got me tore up from the floor. I'm not going to do nothing. So I'm not going to preach again. You the one going to go to hell for it. He never gave us the gift based on how well our life was going. <laughs> I'm going to only serve God when it's good. I'm going to only come to church when it's good. I'm not going to come to church when it's bad. I'm going to figure it out. And if God really loved me, this wouldn't be happening to me. Well, I tell you, I have seen a lot of love that God had for Joseph. But he kept going through. Joseph is a prime example to us that we cannot let our status and position in life change what we do for God. You can't let people, don't let people make you stop doing what God gave you to do. Uh oh. If God gave you to do it, I don't care what people think. I don't care what people feel. I don't care what people say. Because in the end, God will say, I gave you the gift. Why did you let somebody hinder you? The Bible even says, say you ran well, but who hindered you that you did not obey what? The truth. You ran well, but who hindered you? Listen, if we don't obey the truth, which is the word of God, in the lake of fire, we're going to lift up our eyes. How can you go to heaven and you've been a disobedient Christian? Woo! You're not going to heaven if you're disobedient, y'all. You just not going. You, you, you can't be faithful to the, to the natural building but not faithful to God. So then, what we got to do is the condition of your natural life does not alter the gift that God has placed in you. And I'm going to say it to you on the night like this. Stop crying about where you are and do what the Lord said. Stop crying about where you are and do what the Lord said. You want a pity party. So now watch this. So while in prison, God does some unusual things for Joseph that will push him closer to the place where God wants him. Now ask yourself, are you where God really wants you to be or did you stop before you got there? Are you really where God wants you to be or did you stop before you get there? Many people stopped before they got to where God really wanted them because they didn't like the condition that they were in. Joseph was, he was in a bad place. But guess what? All of this was part of God's plan into bringing him to where he had to go. Listen, God could have allowed Joseph outside of the dungeon to meet the chief butler and the chief baker. But guess what? God put Joseph <laughs> where the chief baker and the butler had to come. He sent them where he was. They had to come to prison because that's why Joseph had to interpret the dream in order for him on the path that he's going to eventually go and interpret Pharaoh's dream. But before he got to that, he they took him to the dungeon. In our travel, you're going to have a lot of places that look good. But don't become aroused by your surroundings. It's only a pit stop. Move on. Look at somebody say, it's only a pit stop. Move on. There's a lot of things going to happen on your way to where God is taking you to that's going to look good, feel good, sound good, and you're going to say, ain't no way I can be this blessed. And not be what God wants me to be. 
The devil will make it sound good, look good, put on the right kind of music, and put it in the right place. And you will think, I'm in heaven right here. There's no way, there's no way I could, I could leave where I am. I'm in my oasis right now. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of you have ever been on a road trip going somewhere? You had a destination when you left home. And you stopped on the way to that destination on your trip, and you never made it because you lacked the place that was in between where you were going. How many of y'all never done that? Y'all ain't never done that, huh? Y'all ain't done that? You had, you had a destination where you were going, but you lacked where you were on the way to where you thought you wanted to go. You stayed right there and you went back home. Lord have mercy. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell y'all what. I'm going to tell y'all what, some of y'all are doing that right now. <laughs> some of y'all are doing that right now. You, you, you said you are on your way to heaven, but somewhere between now and heaven and where God really wants you to be, you stop somewhere where you should not have stayed. You stop where you should not have stayed. You should have, you should have drove by that spot. But when you got there, you knew it was God. I know this alone ain't no way. Uh, it's, just, it's just like I'm gonna say this now. It's just like some of y'all that go to Vegas and y'all play the machines, and, and, and you know Vegas got a lot of spots, huh? Vegas got a lot of spots. But but you stopped at this one, you know this one whatever casino, but whatever was your favorite one or uh, your unfavorite one. Let's say it's your unfavorite one, and, and you hit it, you hit it. And you said, no, but I, I got to go. I got to go to the stratosphere. That, that's why I, I, I'm hot at it. But over here, what's another one, y'all? The MGM. The MGM. So I'm at the MGM right now, but the stratosphere is where I'm going. But the, I'm hitting it at the MGM. It's got it. Man, I'm making it. It's the, so, 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 so the gift, I'm cashing in. Look at someone said premature blessing. You can be fooled by premature blessings on the way to where God is taking you to, and it'll make you believe that that's it. Oh man! Now, now, in your natural mind, in your in the natural thinking, you're saying this is it. I mean, why watch it? Why would I leave here? This is it. But I'm going to show y'all something. As good as it may be where you stopped at, what you receive is only a portion of what you really would get if you go to where your destination is. Look at somebody said you only got half of it. And, and, and because that half to you was a lot. So it, it fooled you into believing that you had the real deal right here, but your destination was over there. We have to be careful that we don't become comfortable where we stop at, knowing that it's not our destination. We have to be careful. So that's why I asked you where you really are you do you are you really where God wants you to be, or did you stop before time? And in your travel, there's a lot of stuff gonna come up. Don't let anyone keep you from your blessing. I, I want y'all to find somebody looking on this one. Find somebody looking. I want y'all to tell me these words. Don't let don't let no one don't let anyone keep you from your blessing. Sometimes. It's in the dungeon. <laughs> Woo! Don't let nobody keep you from your blessing. Sometimes your blessing is in the dungeon. <laughs> now that's a hard road to hold right there. That's a hard, that's a hard thing to believe that my blessing is in the dungeon. In other words, it's in the worst of places that you could ever imagine your blessing to be. But that's where it is. Sometimes your 
blessing is in the worst of jobs. And sometimes you've given you've been given the worst of jobs when you get to a job because they, they want to do you wrong and then you the new person on the on the total pole and you get all the dirty work. But sometimes the dirty work is where the best work come from. The dirty work. Joseph was doing good work in a dirty place. In a dirty, in other words, he, he, he was at the lowest of low. Actually, Joseph was better off in the pit. It seemed like he got it. What about it down there? But him? But at the same token, that wasn't where God wanted him to be. So now let's so now let's look at the good part here. Now he's in prison. They throw the chief butler and the baker in. At this particular time, notice how God used Joseph. Can we discern the gifts in operation tonight? Will you give God a chance to use you wherever, whenever? In anywhere in your life, Joseph didn't stop allowing God to use him because he was in a bad place. In your Bible, go to First Corinthians twelve, chapter eight through twelve. We want we want to just kind of touch on this and come back. First Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, verses eight through twelve. First Corinthians 12, 8, 8 to 12. Actually, we're going to start at the 7th verse. First Corinthians 12 and 7. First Corinthians 12 and 7. Everybody there? It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The manifestation of the Spirit is for every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work in that one and self-same spirit divided to every man servantly as he will. You cannot allow your dungeon experience to kill your gift. At this particular time, God had not used Joseph as an interpreter, really, of anybody else's dream. The dream that Joseph had, God told him what it was. Remember, you know the dream that he had? That, that everybody was bound down and, and the chiefs and everything was bound down, the moon and the stars and everything was looking up to him, bound down. Well, now the time had come Joseph is in prison. Now God is getting ready to really manifest himself even greater. Remember the word kept saying up to this point, but the Lord is with Joseph and he prospered him. The Lord is with him and he prospered him. Now God is getting ready to use Joseph in the gift of interpretation of dreams. One thing you got to know about Egypt is this. Egypt was known to be a place of dreams. And that was a God uh, that, that they call here. It, it's called, it said dreams was regarded as sent by the God Thoth. T-H-O-T-H. Thoth. It, it kind of funny sounded, but that's how it is. If you said oath, but it's Thoth. T-H-O-T-H. And it was natural that therefore that these officials thought that Joseph could do this because they believed in dreams and they believe the dreams being interpreted. So what now the problem with the baker and the butler was that the priests 
at that particular time were the only ones who interpreted dreams. So being in prison, when Joseph said he could interpret the dreams, they thought, wow, I thought only the priests of Egypt could do that. But now God uses Joseph to interpret their dream. When we really look at the case of how he began to interpret the baker or the butler's dream, the butler had a pretty good dream, didn't he? Butler's dream that, you know, three sheaves and what, what, what he said, the, let's go back to that 40 here. The butler, the butler's dream was a man. 40, 40, 40 verse. Here it is. The butler dream. The chief butler told his dream that Joseph said that uh, in the vine with three branches it budded and blossomed, shot forth. Genesis 40. And clusters brought throughout ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And Joseph gave him a good interpretation, didn't he? He said, well, your dream simply means that you're going to be restored back to the position you had as that cup now before Pharaoh. And, and uh, you, you're, going to, you're going to get your job back. He's going to lift your head up and give you your job back. So the baker said, woo -wee. Man, he's interpreting a dream. And he gave some good news. Let me get my dream. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be watched without trying to be so hasty to think. But guess what? They lived in that era. They lived in a time where they believed in dreams. So it's like the Bible often said when it talks about a dream. Listen, you have a dream, tell us a dream. Don't say it was a vision. It was a dream. Well, how are you going to live between that? You got to let the Lord tell you whether it's a, a dream or it's a, a vision. And there are some visions you, you wide open, your eyes are wide open, and He'll give you an open dream, uh, an open vision where you. Your eyes are open, you'll see it. And sometimes he'll give you a vision while you may be asleep. But he have to tell you exactly what that is. Don't call something that is not that God has not ordained you to do that. But now, the baker. The baker. The baker's dream. He said, well, the baker saw that the interpretation was good in the 16th verse. And said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on my head. Now listen, I, when I read that from the beginning, when he said he had three white baskets on his head, I just immediately, before I read the other scriptures, thought, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> three white baskets on my head. Okay, we're going to read it. I got three white baskets on my head. And Joseph Anderson said, this is the interpretation there of the three baskets of three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift thy head from off thee. You're going to be hung on the tree. <laughs> and, then, and then you talk about the, the, the bastard, the bastard was up there, and, and, you, and you, it was coming out of your head. He said, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. In other words, the, the birds are going to be eating your brains out. Cut your head off. And they will be eating. Well, he got a bad dream, but guess what? That was his dream. Now watch it. Joseph wasn't the giver of the dream. He didn't make these things happen. It was so. What are we getting to? It's showing that God, Joseph allowed God to use him in a prison state to be the interpreter of the dream that eventually he told, he told the, 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 the butler, right? When you get to where you are and it's good, tell Pharaoh about me. But some years had passed and the butler had forgotten about Joseph. Joseph was still in prison, serving prison time for something that he did not do. Let's look at something here. How many times have we served for something that we did not do? We're going to have to keep the right kind of home. Some things can hurt us to the home. Some things can be bad. But Joseph didn't allow what was wrong towards him to stop God from working in his life. Now when y'all look at our condition and our situation and places where we are, I don't think any of us have been in this worst condition or place as Joseph and not yet be able to still use our gift. Huh? I've 
been mad. I've been angry. I've been upset too. But I haven't been in prison. I've been thrown in, in a pit. I have I, nobody. I, 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 you know, I ain't had to go to jail for, for no wrong crime that I did not commit. So when you think about what we've gone through as believers in God and as saints, look at somebody said you take it. Somebody said, yeah, that's easy to say than done. Well, you know what? It is easy to say than done. Joseph wasn't in prison laughing. It wasn't like he said he was in prison having a party. I, I mean, he, he had some issues. But at the same token, he didn't allow his condition to stop him from praising God. Amen. He yet worshiped God. He yet gave God the praise and the glory. So that's why he told him, he said, listen, have you not heard? That God is the, the interpretations belong to God. How many times have you stopped talking about God? Stop giving God the praise and the glory because of where you were. I ain't saying nothing good about God right about now. Because I'm mad at God. <laughs> How many did that? I'm mad at God. I'm not talking about it. I'm not saying nothing about it. I'm not giving no praise. I'm not giving no glory. I ain't playing no tithes. I ain't playing no offering. I ain't going to church. I ain't doing nothing. I'm mad at God. I'm going to stay home in town. I'm going to eat my cheese and drink my wine. But I'm going to tell y'all what. I thought to do that. I thought to do that at a time in my life. There was a time, there was an issue, there was a circumstance, there was a situation. I said, Lord, I ain't preaching no more. I ain't doing this. I, I ain't doing this. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm looking bad. This, 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 this don't look like God in my life. Mm -mm, I'm going to quit. I'm going to get out. I'm just going to go and get out and do wrong. I'm going to just go up and down. I'm going to hit the streets, Sister LaBelle. I'm going to hit the streets. My life tore up, and you allowed it to be tore up, and I don't believe this could happen to me. I've been, listen, I, I've been faithful to the church. I've been faithful up and down, been beat up in the church, and all these kind of things. Listen, God, this don't happen to me. Guess what? I'm getting ready to walk out and forget it. It ain't worth it. How many of y'all, and any of y'all ever come to that point and say it ain't worth it? Well, I have. I'm telling you, I have. I don't got that point. You know what? I, I'm going to quit. I came to that place. I'm going to quit. And the Lord just said, well, if you, if you quit, where you going to go? What you going to do? And if you die out there where you are, in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. So, Sister Monica, I thought about it. I said, well, maybe that's not a good idea. And I'm going to tell you what, watch this. God, you will find God using you the most when you are in some of the worst conditions in your life. What you call a bad place, God calls a good place. <laughs> Lord, how would you want to use me right now? I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm upset, I don't want to do it. And listen, and God said, I still want to use you because God said, it is not about you, it is about me. Joseph was proven to us even tonight showing that it really wasn't about him. God gifting did not stop because he was in the dungeon. God never really stopped using us. We stop allowing God to. We become angry with God. We become frustrated with God. We tell God it's not worth it. So we quit. We tell God I'm not doing this anymore. But when we think about the price that not only others paid, but Jesus paid. He, Jesus, being the one Dying for people that didn't care anything about it. Now think about this, y'all. You say you hurt. It is. I'm not taking it away. I'm not taking the hurt, the pain. I'm not taking yours away. But think about Jesus. He took the beating and the hurting for us that did no wrong, got no sin. You talking about being lied on? How many times could he be lied on when, he, when they took him to the court? And then you had folks come up and say, this man ain't done no wrong. Then they said, well, I'll tell you what, at the time of the feast of the Passover during this time, that always is that a prisoner is released. Do y'all not know 
that there are no good chief priests, Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, all of them church going people told them release Barabbas who was a murderer. Can, can you, now y'all watch this. I mean, can you imagine that if you hate somebody that bad? Release a murderer. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell y'all what. That, 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 that's oh, uh, you need God to check your heart if you can if you can go and allow a real criminal. To be released. And here's a man that done no, have done no wrong. Done no wrong. Except for making you look bad. Now watch it. Here you go. When, when you make people look bad, people will get people will go after you. When you make people look bad that say that they like you or they are as good as you, they will do you in. So they all got together and told the same lie. And Jesus was crucified. Now look look at God. God put Jesus in the same kind of situation he put Joseph. He put him around the people that knew that didn't care anything about him. That's the only way he could be crucified. If he was around the folks that cared, they'd have never killed him. Judas was the perfect betrayer. Because he knew the Jews were going to back out. When God wants you to go through a trial, He's going to put you around the worst of people. The folks that literally don't like you to the thumb. And I mean, He put them on that don't care, don't like you. Because in order for the plan to be carried out, he got to help somebody go stick to their guns. <laughs> and you think, how could this be happening to me in church? Well, it happened to Jesus. Right in church. The church going folk killed him. And I don't mean no harm, but church going cold folks will kill you. <laughs> But we have to do what Jesus did. Father, forgive them. For them. And somebody said, no, I can't say that. Because these folks know what they're doing. <laughs> Some of y'all have said that. No, I can't forgive them. Lord. They know it. They do it intentionally. And you know what? They do do it intentionally. But God know they're doing it intentionally. But do you not know they're doing it intentionally? It's not your problem. <laughs> yeah, but if they're doing it every time you come, it's not your problem. Your problem is to grow dead. When you die to something, <laughs> it don't bother you. And you can't stop coming and kill it. You know how you kill it? You got to come from it. If it's going to die, you going to die looking at it and die. <laughs> I've been there, y'all. I've been there. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord ain't taking it away. You're going to have to endure it. So you say, well, why, do, why would I go to the house of God if I got to put up with that kind of hell? Right? But why did Jesus keep going? Because he said, I got to die for folks that can't die for themselves. And I got to die for the ones that's put me through hell. Huh? The ones that was the ones that beat them with them stripes. He died for them. Spit in his face. Slapped them. He died for them. Kicked them and stomped them while he was carrying the cross. He died for them. Ripped his clothes on and, and, and put on kingship like clothes and make him look like a king. Put a crown of thorns on his head and laughed on him. He died for him. The same ones, the same ones that, that, that put the nails in his hands and his feet. He died for him. So when we think about 
matter what kid you go through, you can do it. If you put your mind to it. Yes, Ms. Long. Okay, so these same people that he he died for, all of us, right. those people that, that killed him, crucified him. Now, uh, and he, he did ask God, his father, to forgive them also, right? Yes. Okay, so if they later, being that they, they didn't believe that he was who he said he was, and he, and they were given permission to 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 kill him. Now, after it was all said and done, Jesus uh, um, died and and all that stuff, and they maybe later found out that he was who he said he was. Yes, ma'am, they could be saved. And, yeah. That's where I was going. They, they, they repented. They, they still had a change. What a God. Oh, man. Now, 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 this is good. This is good. I got to tell you. This is good. God allowed them to scourge him and beat him and to kill him and turn right back around. And they said, Lord, forgive me for killing him. He really was the son of God. Save me. And guess what? They could get saved. Yep. Wow. Now y'all talking about forgiveness? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's why Jesus told the disciples to go to the upper room and tap it to you being down with power from on high. Only the spirit of God in your life can offer forgiveness to folk that do you like that. You can't do that on your own, y'all. And I'm tell y'all what, it's even tough with the spirit. Hey, come on, somebody go with me. It's, it, with the spirit, it's tough. Can you imagine trying to do that without it? You can't. So God let Jesus do it, and then he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And even if they knew what they did, God still forgave them. Now, what about you? How are we walking around here in unforgiveness? The same thing. And God said. So then we asked the question when we, when we uh, you know, with the Ford case and, 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 and many others, but, but you asked, how can the family, for, I tell you what, they ain't going to heaven without it. Ford ain't going to come back, he's dead and gone, they ain't coming back. I don't care how much money they get, he ain't coming back. But out of all of that, if they don't have forgiveness, And hell, they're going to lift up their eyes in the lake of fire. It ain't worth the job. So when you think about it, how do I forgive somebody that really hurt me? Joseph, believe it or not, God was working it out in him. Yes. Pastor, because uh, <clears throat> with the George um, case, because of the hurt that that family feel and the injustice throughout, you know, the whole world that, and they've been seeing, seeing it and it right. happened to their family. In their in their hearts, um, if they still want uh, um, justice to be done with this guy that killed a member of their family. Does that mean that? I mean, does that? I mean, that don't have nothing to do with your forgiveness because you still want justice done. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Let me show you something. What we have to agree with is the law. You commit a crime. You go to jail. You live by the sword. You die by the sword. Watch this. When it comes to God is not against justice. What Brother Chauvin, Chauvin got to do, Chauvin, whatever his name, how do you pronounce his name, Brother Derrick? The only thing he can do now is ask God for forgiveness if he ain't saved and come in his life and save him. Will he go to jail now? Because right now, it don't matter. He, now watch this. He can be saved. God will save Derek. Now, 
It's nothing wrong with the family that won't justice per the law because that's right. Jesus said, give a, give, when the disciples asked him, well, well, Lord, what about this coin that had seized the head on the name of? He said, render the season of things ascended, season of render to God the things that are gone. Listen, God is about justice. Why? God is so much about justice. He said, the soul that sinned, it shall die. And that same God said in Isaiah, all souls are mine. But the soul that sinned, that does not have repentance shall die. So God is just as just and right as the legal system when it's right. So there ain't nothing wrong with, with, with if you commit a crime that, that you get punished for it. Now the only thing left for the person that's being punished is if he ain't saved to give his life to the Lord. It's just like folk. Now watch this. It's no different. God don't let folk get saved in prison and then take them out of prison because they got saved. You committed a natural moral crime. You do a time. There are some that may get sought or whatever, but you don't. You, well, I'm going to get saved so I can get out of jail. You didn't get out of jail. You might have to get saved. <laughs> so when we look at it, God is about justice. And then as they said, responsibility. The, the law had a responsibility to do what it did. Lawfully so, unlawfully, Joseph was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. And God allowed it. So when we look at God, there's a lot of stops that we're going to make in life that may be unjust to us. But we got to righteously live unto God under whatever condition we're in. That is hard. We're not going to lie, man. Listen, we're not making any of this. We're not making light work, work, light work of any of this on tonight. Listen, let's tell the truth. None of this is easy. When you are hurt, you're hurt. And when there's a pain, there's a pain. Only God can soothe that. But you have to be willing to let God soothe that. Because that pain could kill you literally. I'm not dying before time because I won't forgive somebody. I said I'm not. A whole lot of folks is in the grave for unforgiveness. And it will Unforgiveness will kill you, grave your dead. It'll stress you out. Medicine won't fix it. So I'm just gonna do what the law say. Let it go. Let it go and live. Otherwise, you will die. So we thank God for the lesson tonight. The lesson tonight is really about not allowing your circumstances in life. To stop your gift. I don't care what people feel or think or say about you. It's what God said. God has the last word about you. And when you get through with it, you got to answer all of us. We got to answer to God. Well, why didn't you do it, Lord? They didn't like me, Lord, and they, they did this, and I couldn't do this, and I couldn't do that. Then the Lord tell you to leave, go on and leave. Go somewhere else, because somebody's going to dislike you wherever you go. You, we're going to have to get some grit wherever we go. You're going to have to get some grit and say, for God I live, and for God I die. And I'm going to do what the Lord said. I don't care who dislike it. Because if you don't, you'll constantly be running. Because the devil is in every building. Every building. He's in every building you go. Matter of fact, when you get there, he's there. But I got to be committed to God and say, God, I'm going to do the right thing. Lord, we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for showing us through Joseph again that regardless of our conditions in our life, we cannot stop using the gift that you placed in us. Your gift was a blessing to those who received it. And in return, Joseph will be rewarded even though he's yet in the dungeon. There are just sometimes you cause us to do work in the dungeon 
But we have to keep the right kind of heart, the right kind of mind. Knowing that all things working together for my good and according to your purpose. In Jesus' name. That was just unsaved on tonight that God that if they give their hearts and to you, they confess with their mouth, believe in their heart, and you raised them. Jesus from the dead, you said they shall be saved. Thank you for that one that have said that on tonight. Those who are struggling with coming to you, God, we pray for them on tonight. That backslider that's turned and gone the other way, bring them back to you. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word and for believing that we can be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you.